Well, a very good afternoon to you from a very grey and wet Victoria Park in Causeway Bay. We're here for two hours to cover three main races this afternoon. At two o'clock, the main race of the day, it's the 16th Hong Kong International Kart Grand Prix. Now, this race has attracted the world's top drivers, and no wonder, because it's the richest event on the karting calendar. There's 100,000 Hong Kong dollars prize money in total, and to the winner, it's worth 30,000. Now, the qualification was decided yesterday after a series of heats. And those that fail to qualify do get a race today. It's a consolation race, which is due to start at 2.45. And we'll be covering that. 30 minutes later, it'll be our third and final race, the Seiko Hong Kong and Japan Interport Team Race. That should take us up to just about 4 o'clock, when we shall be off air. Now, racing started this morning. And the main race was the Hong Kong International Class Championship, which was won by last year's runners-up, Tony Lam. And the man who beat him, Ken Tomzit, uh, last year, failed to make it three in a row because he lost all chance when he went off the track to avoid a back marker whose engine had seized on him. Now, before we get to the afternoon's racing, uh, you see the cars are still, the carts, rather, are still on the grid. Uh, perhaps a note of historical interest on carts. Now, they started life in the States when uh, a chainsaw, an outboard motor company, decided to branch out into lawnmowers. Now, the venture wasn't a success, and the company was left with 8,000 engines surplus to requirements. Well, two enterprising employees bought one, adapted it to a tubular frame, and karting was born. Now, that was back in 1956. In 1957, the first race had been held in the parking lot of a supermarket in Pasadena. Well, don't mock the Formula One uh, series now have a race in the parking lot of a Las Vegas nightclub. Well, then racing spread to Europe, it went behind the Iron Curtain. And now the sport's governing body is now within the overall umbrella of the main motor racing body, the FIA. Now, the advantage of these machines, we'll be going in close up to take a, a better look at them, the advantage of these machines, and therefore the sport, is that they're light, they're easily transportable, and circuits can be set up almost anywhere, including the uh, asphalt soccer pitches that we have here in Victoria Park. Now, to limit the pollution of the environment, all the cars are monitored for noise. Now, before and during each race, anything over 91 decibels measured from 22 meters in the center of the track is ruled out. But believe me, there's still a deafening roar as these little engines go uh, in pass in front of us at the start of the race. Now, our main race commentator this afternoon will be Ma uh, Martin Robson who competed last year in Hong Kong's uh, international race. But uh, unfortunately for him, uh, fortunately for us, business commitments kept him out. But uh, as I say, Martin, you're now able to help us, but I bet uh, you're a bit envious of the drivers out there this afternoon. Well, I am in a way, Brian, but uh, on the other hand, I'm not really considering the weather conditions. These must be some of the most difficult conditions to uh, judge because it's not quite wet enough for uh, wet tires and it's not quite dry enough for dry tires. So there's going to be a very big decision for the team managers and the drivers whether to start off on wets and risk the chance of uh, running down the thread completely and therefore having to come in and change to a new set of wets till it's wet enough or whether to start off on dries and uh, maybe not do so well in the first couple of laps. Now, when you say that uh, they can come in and change, now this main race is over 35 laps. The track is just uh, 800 meters uh, all the way around, so really uh, anyone going in for a pit stop is going to be under a great disadvantage, not like a Formula One race where a pit stop won't necessarily rule you out of contention, but uh, here really they have to make a decision and, a, and the right one right from the start, don't they? That's right. Um, one lap here is approximately uh, 40 seconds, so if you come in for a pit stop you very easily drop down one lap and uh, one lap in karting is quite difficult to catch up because you have a lot of back markers to go through usually and getting through traffic can be very very difficult the carts at the moment are uh, the way they're lined up on the grid uh, was determined yesterday in various qualifying heats and uh, after some very exciting racing yesterday we've got uh, number one Lars Forsman on pole position on the grid uh, next to him is number two Peter de Bruyne from the Netherlands who uh, won last year and then we have a Japanese driver uh, Asai number three 
with Harm Scrum on another uh, Dutch gentleman on uh, card number four. Uh, Harm last year was leading until uh, he unfortunately spun off and played away the race. Now, Martin, we're seeing them bump start because this is one of the features of this class of go-kart. There are no clutches, so obviously a, a jump start is a bump start is the only way to get the race underway. And this will mean that the actual start of the race will be a rolling one. Now, could you explain how they'll be lining up? Yes. Well, the cars will go around the track, and uh, what they do now on this lap is go around as fast as they can to clean out the engine and make sure it's all running smoothly. And when they come back around by the start, you see the starter with the green flag out. The carts are now under starter's orders and they will proceed to go around the circuit until they've lined up in their grid orders. Now, this can take anything from uh, two to three, maybe even four laps, although with uh, international class drivers, they usually get themselves lined up pretty quickly. We saw in practice this morning the less experienced, the, uh, the local drivers, made, as you say, three or four passes. Now, what they do, they all come down in pairs towards the starter and he decides at the last minute whether or not they're all lined up in the correct order. He's not satisfied, round they go again. But they actually make a charge as they did there at the green flag with the assumption that it'll be raised. And then of course they must break before they get to the end of the first straight and then carry on as normal to make another pass. That's right. Now one of the interesting people we've got to look out for way back down on the grid is the English driver, Terry Fullerton, who's uh, won twice here. Now, he had problems, I gather, in, in practice yesterday afternoon, but you were saying, watch out for him because he's a terrific starter. That's right. Uh, Terry usually is uh, very good at anticipating when the flag is going to fall, and uh, I think we'll see him shoot probably up the inside of the track and uh, possibly gain maybe four or five positions. Oh, another pass. Going around, we ought to mention the, the main straight here that we see them going through past the flag. They can touch speeds of up to 65 70 miles an hour. They have a very sharp bend, which, for uh, it's safe, for easy's sake, we shall say it's, call it the first bend. They'll go round over a hump down to a tennis court area, round back up into what we should call the S's, the zigzaggy course, into a hairpin over by the Stand, which is the area where they're, they are now. There's a short straight called the pit straight. Then they turn into the main sprint down along main straight. So here they come again. No. No, the, the they're putting their hands up because they're indicating the only way they have of indicating to the drivers behind that they're going to slow down. Because as you're explaining to me this morning. Uh, if, if the back markers haven't noticed that the flag's not waving, they can just see the, the, uh, the, the crowd stream away in front of them. They're going to put everything, put their right foot down as hard as they can go. And if they're not careful, they'll all end up in a pile at the end of the first straight. That's right. And uh, that does sometimes happen with uh, the less experienced drivers where they don't give proper signals and you end up with what we saw this morning. Still not properly lined up. Now, the other thing, Martin, we see some of the drivers reaching behind them with their right hand, correcting, adjusting something on the engine. Now, what's, what's that? Well, they're not actually adjusting something, Brian. They're holding their hand in front of the carburetor. And uh, what this does, it sucks in a little bit of extra fuel so that when the hard engines are turning slowly and they're not normally sucking in lots of fuel, uh, by putting your hand over and bringing in a little bit more, you give an extra bit of lubrication to the uh, engine. These engines, of course, are two-stroke engines running on a mixture of oil and uh, petrol. And, and we're away! Five. And it's number two where uh, Peter Lebrand has gone straight into the lead, followed by Lars Forsman, number one from Sweden. And they've gone right down into the tennis court area. It's still Peter Lebrand in the lead. No, Lars Forsman has now come through and he's passed Peter Lebrand round by the tennis court. Up into the S's. It's still Lars Forsman. Winner three years ago at this event, he had a great start. Peter De Bruyne up with him, number four in third place, Harm Schumann, who's only had four races, five races this season. He's won four of them. And into the pit, the pit straight, they're coming down to the completion of lap one in the main straight. And as they scream by, it's still number one, Lars Forsman. 
Aspen in the lead, followed by number two, Peter de Bruyne. And Hans Schumann is now in third position. Uh, number three from Japan, Asai, is pushing hard on Harms Hills, but it's still number one, Lars Forsman, who's up in the lead. And they come out into the S's. There's a group of three cards pushing each other very, very hard. And it's still Lars, followed, followed by Peter de Bruyne, followed by Harms Schumann. On slick tyres, no problems with traction at the moment. No, I think the track has dried out a little bit, and once these cards start going round, uh, they will very quickly dry out the line. Providing we don't get any more rain, uh, the track surface should be pretty good. We were talking about Terry Fullerton at the end of that second lap. Terry Fullerton had come up four places into ninth position. We'll be seeing a lot of action from this man, I'm sure. He's a very aggressive driver, and there's another driver to watch out, which is number 22, Stefano Modena. Modena, we saw in action last year. He's 18 year old last year, long hair flowing out behind him. He literally looked a menacing figure on the track, absolutely fearless and reckless. He crashed in the main race in the afternoon, and I hope we're going to get a complete race from him this, this afternoon. see that number 13, Terry Fullerton, is still in ninth position and having a bit of a dice there with the Japanese driver. I didn't quite catch the Japanese number. But we still have Lars Forsman in the lead with Peter De Bruyne pushing him, but it seems to me that Lars is pulling away a little bit. They're opening up a lead, certainly, on third place man, Harm Schurman. Five right behind them is the Japanese driver, Suzuki. Coming now into the main straight for the completion of lap four. And it's number number one, Lars Forsman in the lead, with number two, uh, Peter De Bruyne second still. But Fullerton has come up one more place into eighth position. This really promises to be some very exciting racing because all of these guys are potential or have been past world champions and none of them are going to give one inch of track to the other. They really drive these cards right on the very edge. A one slight mistake and they're off and at this stage of the race really anything can happen. It's too noticeable to compare the speed that these drivers and the, that are showing here with the racing we saw this morning in practice. Number two, Peter de Brown is shot by Lars Forsman. They were being held up by two Hong Kong drivers, David Du and Lao Kong Kwong, and it looks like that Peter de Brown took advantage of that and managed to go by Forsman and is now in the lead. I was saying, Martin, these drivers seem, their engines, their carts seem to be stuck like leeches to the track this morning. We had carts going all over the place, and we were very worried that we were going to get a lot of accidents this afternoon. But this is the skill of these drivers, that they're competing at the highest level, they're pushing themselves, and they're staying on the track. That's right. These guys are very, very experienced in all kinds of weather, and a little bit of a wet track really doesn't make any difference to them. Tussle for third and fourth place between Sherman and Azai. Suzuki, rather. Well, Schumann is, uh, could have won the race here last year, but unfortunately, he was uh, around about the 12th lap. He spun off and played away his chances. Uh, at the moment, it seems, though, that De Bruyne and Schumann are both much faster than. Oh, sorry, De Bruyne and uh, Forsman are much faster than Schumann because they seem to be pulling away a large gap. Medina's come up at the end of lap seven to 11th position, so he's made up 11 positions in this very tight field. Medina is a very, very aggressive driver. And it's still number two, Peter De Bruyne in the lead. And Forsman really is giving him a hard time. They've just lapped another back marker. They're both coming down by the dog leg into the pit straight. Peter De Bruyne, number two. Lars Forsman, number one. They come tearing by us at 60 miles an hour and then hard on the brakes to take the first bend almost sideways. De Bruyne really shut the door on Forsman there. I thought he was going to come up on the inside, but De Bruyne took his line, kept him out. Yes, these drivers are very, very aggressive when they are driving and they won't 
won't give an inch on the track. If a guy can close the door, he will. Modena, at the end of that lap, has moved up another place. He's up into 10th. I think we're going to be seeing something of him later in this race. He's going to be up there with the leaders. Well, young Modena, of course, is only 19 years old, and he's been out of racing from February this year when he broke his leg in Italy, and uh, he only started racing again in October. So he hasn't really had as much practice as some of the other guys who've been racing all year. And now on to the 10th of this 35 lap. It's still Peter De Bruyne, just a shading last horseman. And we've got number 13, I see, uh, Terry Fullerton, who's moved up into sixth position. Coming into pit straight now. They've got about 75 meters on the third place man, number four, Harm Schurman. Driver number two, Peter De Brown, is uh, last year when he was here, he was driving very nervously and at one point almost lost the race when he was pressured by Harm Schurman. I'm wondering if the similar thing is going to happen this year because Lars Forsman really is pushing him very, very hard. Now in that 10th lap, Terry Fullerton has moved up one more place. Let's see if he's made any ground as they cross in front of us, in front of our commentary position at the end of the 11th lap. There's the leader, Peter De Bruyne, Lars Forsman. And Lars Forsman is making a play. He was right upside De Bruyne as they go into the hump. Fullerton is closing, there's no doubt about that. As he goes over the hump down into the tennis court area, he's certainly closing on the leading pack. As we said, mechanical problems kept him out last year. Mechanical problems kept him down the grid yesterday's practice, but he's certainly making up for it this afternoon. Terry is, of course, a very, very experienced driver, having been British champion quite a number of times. and. Uh, He's a full-time driver. He does nothing but drive carts all the time, so he has certainly got a very good chance of doing very well in the IKP this year. He has won it twice previously. And the leader, Peter De Brown, is still fighting off Lars Forsman as they come up to some back markers. And this really should sort them out, because if, if a back marker is a little bit inexperienced at the back, he could well pull one or the other of the drivers. Yes, it's very easy to come up behind a back marker, and especially with an inexperienced driver, uh, to judge that he may be, you may think he's going to move to the left, but at the very last moment they can do something unpredictable, move to the right and knock you off completely. Down they come for the completion of lap 13. Nothing to choose between these two front runners. Terry Fullerton right up behind number four, Arm Shawman. really is driving inches away from the bumper of Peter De Brown. For one minute Peter seems to be pulling away a little bit, but as soon as they come onto the straight, Lars seems to have a little bit more power in his engine and pulls right up behind him. <coughs> they come point. for the completion of lap 14. These two are having in the front. And what a scrap they we've got here for, for the third, fourth, and fifth places between Sherman, Suzuki, and Terry Fullerton. And it's still Peter De Brown in the lead from Lars Forsman. This is a very, very exciting race. I've never seen anyone be <coughs> impressed by, by uh, Forsman. Let's have a look at third, fourth, fifth battle. Numbers four, five, and 13. As they come down the straight, it's still Peter De Brown leading from Lars Forsman of Sweden. Card number two in the lead. Card number now four. Now in front of our commentary position. Terry Fullerton still right up with the Arm Sherman, third place, Suzuki in fifth. We just noticed that Modena, the young Italian, has moved up to sixth position. That's at the completion of lap 15. And Japanese driver 
number five, Suzuki, seems to be hanging on to his fourth place. He's been there almost since the beginning of the race. And I think that uh, Fullerton is going to have a job cut out trying to get by him. There they go, Skuman and Fullerton. Terry Fullerton has now moved up into third position. 
position. And it looks like he's gaining slightly on number two, Peter De Bruyne. Here we come round the S's. The roll's reversed here. Lars Forsman was right on the, the back wheels of uh, De Bruyne throughout the race up until now, but it looks as though Forsman is just getting a little bit of a breathing space. Yes, he's beginning to pull away a little, but now they come up behind these back markers, and it looks like number 11, y y Yutaka, is slowing Forsman down a little bit, and therefore enabling number two to Brown to catch up slightly. De Bruyne going very wide there to go around the back markers, Forsman through rather more easily. Coming into the S's, there's a clear road in front of Forsman now. The track now, Brian, will start to get quite slippery because the rain has started to come down slowly again and all these drivers are still on slicks. It's still number one, last horseman in the lead, followed by number two, Peter De Bruyne. Fullerton through, still in third place. End of the 25th lap, 10 laps to go. still in the lead. Lars, of course, is full-time involved in the kart sport because he's a kart dealer in his hometown in Sweden. And he finished second this year in the World Championships. 1.2 second difference between the leader, Forsman, and second place man, Peter De Bruyne, as they pass in front of our commentary box for the start of the 27th lap. go by the tree coming out of the tennis court area and into the S's. It's still number one, Lars Forsman. And Lars Forsman now really is pulling away from number two, Peter De Bruyne. Forsman there benefiting from the lack of traffic up, up in front. He can really put his head down and get going. Brian had to contend with a lot of back markers negotiating round, round his way around them in the middle stage of this race. But it appears that Lars also is benefiting from the slippery conditions because he's always been very fast in the wet. <coughs> surprise is that the Japanese riders aren't showing a bit better. As you were saying earlier, that they're normally very good in the rain, very well prepared. Yes, although in these conditions it's not quite rain and it's not quite dry, so providing they're on rain tires, they are very fast. Although when they're driving on slicks in the semi-wet conditions, they have no more advantage than any of the other drivers on the track. It's still Forsman in the lead. De Bruyne second. Terry Fullerton has come right up from 13th position on the grid into third place. And that's the leader, Lars Forsman, lapping number eight, uh, Noda from Japan, which is very surprising because Noda did very well in time trials here, and uh, he now appears to be dropping way down. He's been lapped by the leader. Forsman is lifting the outside tyre quite frequently as he goes around these bends. He really is pushing his car to the limit, although he won't be lifting so much anymore because as the track gets slippery... Number one, Lars Forsman, still in the lead from number two, Peter De Bruyne. On the 31st lap. And Modena, the, the young Italian, has moved up into fourth place ahead of Suzuki. What if we were extolling the virtues of Terry Fullerton coming up to third from 13th? What about Modena? Right up from 22nd position on the grid. Well, Modena is an Italian driver and has...
second lap. Well, can Forsman hold on? He's got a little bit of clear road in front of him. He needs to stay out of trouble. And barring any mechanical problem, he must have this race. Yes, of course, you could never tell until the very last lap, until the checkered flag has been passed, because in karting, anything can happen. These small 100cc engines turn over at 22,000 RPM per minute, and uh, it only takes a small speck of dust, and the whole thing seizes up. And this is what happened last year to various of the top drivers. They were going along very nicely until suddenly the engine seized. But Lars Forsman looks in great shape, and looking at his car, everything appears to be fine. I think he will have a very good chance of winning the 16th IKP. He certainly opened up a little bit of a lead on second place man Peter De Bruyne now. De Bruyne got snarled up with a couple of back markers. Number 27 there in difficulty, Andy Chan, Hong Kong driver. Last Forsman up on the tail of number 23, the Hong Kong driver Ken Thompson, who I mentioned in the introduction to this race was twice winner of the uh, Hong Kong International Class event. He spun out this morning. There's the time. Two laps to go. Last Forsman. Can he hold on? Last Forsman now coming out of the tennis court area into the S's. Track now really becoming very slippery with this very fine rain coming down. Last going by a Hong Kong driver, number 31, David Du. And he really has pulled himself out quite a nice lead. Last lap, car number one. Bulletin has come up into second place. What's happened to Peter De Bruyne? De Bruyne way back down the field. And the checkered flag is ready for number one, Lars Forsman, as he comes down the S's into pit straight. He's round the hairpin, coming up by the pits. Part number one has won the 16th International Hong Kong Car Grand Prix. A superb drive. A superb drive from him now. Where's Terry Fullerton? There he is. Ways to the crowd. He'll be delighted with that ride. Coming up, as I said, from 13th up to second. A terrific ride from him. De Boyne through. I think that must be. No, we have cart number five. Suzuki. Suzuki in third place. According to my left chart here, Brian, I have number 22, Stefano Medino, finishing in sixth place, but of course we'll have to wait for the official confirmation. Of course, we found this morning very, very confusing to keep up with the, the back of the field because uh, this morning we were going through checking on one of the races and uh, we thought that a back marker number 20 was balking the leader and uh, he kept getting a, a blue flag from the track marshals who were also confused the track announcer was also confused and in the end he was given the the last lap sign and uh, in fact he'd sneak through down at the tennis court just The only people that can tell are the, the Seiko timers, the official timers. There's a, an official on each cart. That's right. Uh, the main problem with karting is, of course, that the lap times are so so low and positions change so often that unless you have uh, a large team of lap scorers, it's very, very difficult to keep track of who's where. Now, we've got the two places we're sure of. Lars Forsman first, Terry Fulton. Yes, it's Peter De Bruyne up into third. We've got two lap scorers helping us, so there was uh, one right, one wrong. Okay, when you're ready. 
in uh, fourth place there, cart number five, Suzuki. Fifth place. Cart number six, Wai Li from Japan. Okay, we'll take a short break. We'll be back in time for the presentation ceremony and, of course, the rest of the afternoon's racing. We'll take a short break. Now for the drawing. In a season of stars, it's TV censored bloopers. <laughs> the Smarts. The Flubs. <laughs> You'd be in Fantalina, right? The Flubs. Because you're the only gavoons dumb enough to try to muscle in on John Mazzetti. TV censored bloopers in a season of stars. December the 6th on TV Park. That's why I'm a bird. I'm a bird. I'm a bird watcher. If you're going to Hawaii, the best way to see the islands is by sea. This eliminates annoying problems such as immigration check-ins and hotel reservations. Enjoy the ship's facilities and have plenty of time for sightseeing. For more details of the Hawaii Cruise Highlight Tour, contact your travel agent. Welcome back to a very wet and grey Victoria Park. In Causeway Bay. You will have just seen a, a very exciting main race, the uh, 16th Hong Kong Kart Grand Prix, which was won by the fastest man in practice, Lars Forsman. Second place, the really the race of the day, I thought, was from Terry Fullerton, who'd come right up from 13th position. Now, of course, it's an indication, uh, if you're wondering, the grid positions unlike formula one racing let's say where the carts have or the cars have a number assigned to them and they keep the same numbers throughout the season in karting the number changes with each event with each meeting now the cart number one will always be the fastest in practice cart number two the second fastest in practice and so on that's correct yeah um, usually what happens is the uh, the grid positions are determined with a series of heats and um, you get a new number on your card every time you start a new race, so it becomes very, very difficult at times to keep track of who's who. On screen, we have, while we're waiting for the winners to come round to the victory rostrum, we've got, uh, we can see the scales in the background. Uh, we'll talk about the scales later. There's Lars Borsman. There's Terry Fullerton. On the left. And shaking hands there, Peter De Bruyne, last year's winner. Well, a motley assortment of carts. Now, we mentioned the scales. Now, there's scrutineering before the races, i.e. the carts have to be, uh, have to conform to the standard requirements laid down. There's a weight limit on the carts, and they're also presumably checked after each race. Yes, um, the cart plus... <coughs> And um, if the driver is too light, which um, a lot of drivers are, they carry pieces of lead on the cart in order to come up to that minimum. Uh, after each race, the, uh, mainly the winning carts, the engines are opened up and checked in order to see that nobody is cheated by slightly increasing the uh, bore size or anything. <laughs> Last falls and waiting for the champagne. Considering the conditions here at the moment, this track must be very, very slippery. It really was a very good race by, uh, by Lars Forsman. He lost the lead once to uh, Peter de Brown and took it back and held on to it. And <laughs> I think he gave most members of the press there a nice champagne bath. Lars Forsman, winner of the 13th International Car Grand Prix back in 79. Uh, Obviously a very happy man and 30,000 Hong Kong dollars the richer.
reminder that this Kart Grand Prix is the, the richest event on the karting calendar, over 100,000 Hong Kong dollars in prize money. Second place man, Peter De Bruyne with the champagne. Spouting there, he gets uh, $2,000 plus a trophy. And third place man, Terry Fullerton, Great Britain, 1,000. Sorry, second place. I've taken a place away from Terry Fullerton. You can see from the way uh, all the people on the stands are huddled up underneath umbrellas, it really is beginning to uh, come down now. 